Welcome to section 16 of bacteria. This is our bacteria overview figure. In this video, we'll be discussing Staphylococcus epidermidis, which you can see right here. Our symbol for this bug will be this vet and dermatology clinic with this crazy looking doctor. Dermatology clinic sounds like epidermidis, so this should be pretty intuitive. Notice that we've made sure the background has some purple shades. Just like in our other videos, this is to help you remember that Staph epidermidis is gram positive. This is a gram stain of Staphylococci organisms. Notice that the organism stains purple, which is why it's a gram positive organism. And also notice that the bacteria are circular or coccy shaped, and that they form clusters, as you can see, for example, right here. This type of morphology is unique to Staphylococci. Next, notice that we've shown a flower vase on the operating table. Probably not the most sterile thing in the world, but this doctor is pretty crazy, so he apparently doesn't seem to care too much. Flower sounds like flora, so we've included them in this image to help you remember that Staph epidermidis is part of the normal skin flora. This is a vet clinic, so we thought it would be fitting to include a bison on the table. Bison sounds like novobiosin, so it will be our symbol for the novobiosin test. The fact that the biosin is vulnerably sitting on the operating table and appears injured should help you remember that Staph epidermidis is novobiosin sensitive. We discussed this figure in section 9, which was our video on the Viridans group Streptococci, but recall that if there is clearing around a disc saturated with novobiosin, then the organism is novobiosin sensitive. Notice that there is a large zone of clearing directly adjacent to this disc. So if this were a novobiosin disc, then the organism here would be novobiosin sensitive. For step 1, you need to know that Staph epidermidis is novobiosin sensitive. If you look closely at the wall behind the bison, you'll notice that his blood splattered all over the wall. You could say that his blood has contaminated the surgical room. This part of the image is here to help you recall that Staph epidermidis frequently contaminates blood cultures. We've shown the cat here because she's also sick and is waiting for an evaluation from the doctor. Remember, if we include the cat in the image, it's catalase positive. If it's not included, then you can assume that the organism is catalase negative. So Staph epidermidis is a catalase positive organism. This is a picture demonstrating the catalase test, which we covered in more detail in section 7, which was our video on listeria. Recall that the bubbles right here indicate that the organism is catalase positive. The cat is pretty scared because she's seeing how this doctor is treating the bison. In her fear, she couldn't help but urinate on the floor. Urine sounds kind of like urea, and it also contains urea, so we thought this would be a good symbol for urease positive organisms. So cat urinating for urease positive. Urease breaks down urea into carbon dioxide and ammonia. Because ammonia is a basic compound, it will raise the pH of the solution it's in. In the urease test, there is a pH-sensitive substance in the test tube that becomes pink when the pH increases. Therefore, if the organism is urease positive and urea is added to the test tube, then the solution should turn pink. So as you can see from the image on the right, the pink color in this test tube right here indicates that the organism is urease positive. Okay, moving on, notice that we've added a draining system to the surgical room. As the cat urinates, the urine goes down the drain and we can see that there is a nasty looking biofilm stuck to the pipe. The biofilm on the pipe is here to help you remember that Staph epidermidis produces an adherent biofilm that allows it to infect prosthetic devices and IV catheters. The biofilm is an extracellular polysaccharide matrix that functions as a barrier to antibiotics and the immune system. To emphasize this point, we've shown a stick stuck in the bison. This is a foreign body, just like a hip implant, a ventricular peritoneal shunt, or any other prosthetic device, and as such, they are susceptible to becoming infected. So stick in the bison for infects foreign bodies. We've also shown the doctor with some special surgical eyewear with a tube coming off of it. The tube looks kind of like an IV tube, and is here to help you remember that staph epidermidis also infects IV catheters. Next, notice that we've included a car in the parking lot. Just like in other videos, we've included the car here to help you remember that staph epidermidis can cause endocarditis in patients who have prosthetic heart valves. Finally, we've also included a van in the parking lot to help you remember that vancomycin is effective against staph epidermidis. Okay, now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A 39-year-old male is admitted to the hospital due to a fever of 38.7 degrees Celsius and a cardiac murmur. He recently had his aortic valve replaced due to degeneration of a congenital bicuspid aortic valve. Blood cultures are obtained and grow coagulase-negative staphylococci. Which of the following is most likely true regarding this organism? A. It produces an adherent biofilm. B. It releases an exotoxin into the bloodstream. C. It is urease-negative. Or D. It is novobiosin-resistant. Hopefully from the question stem, you notice that this patient has prosthetic valve endocarditis. 
We can deduce this based on the recent aortic valve replacement, fevers, and a cardiac murmur. The fact that the blood cultures have grown coagulase-negative staphylococci is a dead giveaway that this is staphylococcus epidermidis. We didn't include anything about coagulated blood in the image like we did in Staph aureus because Staph epidermidis is coagulase negative. However, it's a high yield point to remember that Staph epidermidis is coagulase negative. So with this in mind, we're asked which statement is true. The correct answer is A. It produces an adherent biofilm. As we discussed earlier, the biofilm is an extracellular polysaccharide matrix that functions as a barrier to antibiotics in the immune system. B is false because Staph epidermidis doesn't produce an exotoxin. C and D are false because Staph epidermidis is urease positive and novobiosin sensitive. So again, the correct answer is A. It produces an adherent biofilm. From the image, recall that the nasty looking biofilm stuck to the pipe right here is used to represent that Staph epidermidis produces an adherent biofilm. And with that, we've discussed everything you need to know about Staph epidermidis.